what have you made to do now? Don't blame me. You're the one who told her how to be a good mother. A good mother, not a slave. You all right? You look exhausted. My welfare is irrelevant. All that matters is my child. You had any sleep at all? Sleeping is selfish. I must stay awake to look after my child. Eating is selfish too. All my food must go to my child. I know what you're thinking. This is the perfect chance to record the effect of hunger and exhaustion on the alien body. Okay, I don't know what you're thinking. And we've got to stop her. But she's happy, making me happy. What can I do? Oh, that's the type of attitude I like. <laughs> Oh, hello, Mrs. Johnson. Just a surprise visit. But I can see you're taking perfectly good care of these children. Well, of course I am. And the most important thing in my life. Oh. You've just caught her at a bad time. I mean, a good time. She's normally much weirder than this. Would you like to lick the spoon, darling? Check on Brian. He he's a lunatic. He's filled the living room with sponge cakes. Now, in order to cut the cake into slices, Sophie will have to turn northwest, north, north, towards the cutlery drawer here. That's when we strike. First, I cause a diversion. Oh, hello, Sophie. That's a very fetching spatula you have there. Then you sneak round the back, whip in and... How much have you heard? Enough to show what a loopy idiot you are, Brian. Oh, don't be silly. There's nothing wrong with a step-parent and child playing with toys. Yes. Yes, that's right. That's what we were doing, playing with toys. <laughs> Not like we were planning any crimes or anything, was it? No. Oh, it's lovely. Just, just carry on. <laughs> and I think you and I should have a little chat about making up stories. That was close, Eddie. Almost too close. Shall we call off the robbery? No! We've been planning this job for almost 15 minutes. It's too late to call it off. No, it's time to put our devious plan into operation. <laughs> Perfect. Now, where's that knife? Hello, Sophie. Oh, that's a rather spatching fetula you've got there. You keep your hands off this cake. Every crumb of this is going down Dan's throat, even if I have to shove it down myself. All right. My plan to steal the cake has failed. Oh, Sophie, you're just too clever for me. Right, change of plan. I'll grab the cake, stick it on your back, you can carry it out like a great creamy tortoise. Brian, I can't see. The eye holes aren't lined up. Well, use your sense of smell. Now hurry up before Sophie sees us. Hello again, Brian. Thought you could outsmart me, did you? Yes. Yes, I did. Yes, well, you and your little friend, whoever he may be, can get out of my kitchen! Come in! Hello, Mrs. Sophie, is Dan in? Hello, little man, friend of my boy. Danny, your little friend is here to play. Can I have some of that cake? No. Don't mind her. Let's go. No, no, don't go. Everything you need is here. Sit down and have a slice of cake. Oh, look, here's a nice big spoon. Or you could just stick your face right in it if you like. Dan? We were so close, Eddie, so close. I could almost taste it. What did it almost taste of? Cake. Never mind. We'll just have to give up. Never. Criminal masterminds don't give up. We need a new plan. <sighs> There's no point. As long as Sophie's around, we've got no chance. That's it. The only obstacle between us and the cake is Sophie. To get to the cake, we need to remove the obstacle. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, no. That's right. Eddie, you're going to have to murder Sophie. I visited your foster parents as you asked, and they seem a perfectly caring couple to me. Got any rope in here? Sharp knives? Rat poison? No? You see? Always making sure that you're safe. You should count yourself lucky. Lucky? Mm -hmm. That you came on the one day of the year in the one minute, when they were almost normal? It's quite obvious to me that you're attention-seeking, making up stories to sound important. I'm not! And if you won't take us back into care, I'll leave here on my own. Oh, Jacqueline, Jacqueline, why do we have to go through this every time? Oh, right. Right. Sophie? What's the matter? Dan didn't want my cake. 
you like, son? No. I made it especially for him and he just ran off. Don't worry about Dan. He's out on his so-called date. His what? Called what? Let's just say there are some things a mother can't do for their children. Oh, but Becky, I have to do everything, otherwise you'll go back to the home. He can't do everything. Dan fancies that girl, Selena. That's something he has to sort out for himself. I am the boy's mother. And I shall provide his every need. Miss Johnson! Yes. I mean, no. I mean... Uh, well, I, I just wanted to say goodbye to Mrs Johnson. She's not here. But she wanted me to tell you that she loves the children very much and she'd do anything for them. Absolutely anything. <laughs> Sorry, who, who are you? My name is Selina, oh. and I, I mean Sophie, I mean Mrs Johnson, loves the children so much that she knocked me unconscious, popped me in a big sack, and brought me back here for Dan. Are you serious? Absolutely. <laughs> well, you've got to get away. Come with me. She'll never let me go. She loves the children too much. If I try to escape, she'll just knock me out again. Oh. I think you can hear her coming Space. right now. Hello? Yes. I'm not suggesting you murder Sophie. Good. I'm demanding you murder Sophie. Forget it, Brian. It's a horrible, horrible thing to do. Why? It isn't a crime if you do it, remember. You're only little, so it doesn't count. It counts for Sophie. Sophie won't even know about it. Not if you do it properly. All you do is pop a couple of these into her ears. Once they're squeezed up tight, they glow red and then explode in a shower of cold gravy. Subtle, but deadly. These from Valux. eBay. It's a planet in the Gamma 9 quadrant. I think you're horrible. So are you. We're partners in crime. I don't want to be your partner anymore. Eddie, come back. I can't murder her, only you can do it. Only Eddie can do it. Watch out, Sophie.